Hello guys, this video is going to be probably one of my most honest and transparent videos that I will have ever made. I really want to make this video because I just feel like there's a lot of sugar coating in the Amazon world. A lot of people like to make it appear like it's better than it is and sometimes it happens unintentionally because like people just don't understand what it is so they think it's super easy. They're like, oh my god, people are magically making money online and sometimes it feels like that. Sometimes I'm like, wow, I can't believe we have this opportunity to make money online because it doesn't feel as hard as a traditional business would like if you physically own like a pizza shop for example like they're putting in so much more work than we are but that doesn't mean that selling on amazon is not still a real business that still requires real work and requires real like business skills i think the progression of short form content like tiktoks reels specifically for educational content is not a good idea i really like i've tried to get into making short form content for educational purposes and every time i did make a video i I just felt like it was it's just not long enough like you just can't explain the depths of Amazon <laughs> and selling on Amazon and having a business in a 10 second clip like it's just literally not possible so every time I have tried to make a short form video I literally deleted it because I was just like this is not going to get the message that I actually want to get across so that's why I love Twitter and YouTube specifically for educational purposes and for Amazon because you can't teach something in 30 seconds it's literally not possible the only outcome that's going to come from that is people watching this 30 second video thinking that something is easy and kind of misleading them but anyways not to slander anyone i just really don't believe in short form content and i want to show you guys the truth of what amazon looks like and i want to kind of go back and explain what the first couple of months of my business actually looked like how much net profit i actually made and i'll give you my thoughts of like what i was feeling during that time also i just wanted to mention one last thing what your journey looks like and how much profit you're able to make heavily depends on how much money you have available to invest in inventory so it will also depend on other factors like the quality of products that you find how quickly you're like how quickly the turnover is so how quickly you're able to purchase a product flip it get the money back purchase an another product flip it get the money back etc but it also heavily depends where you are financially the more money that you have the faster you're going to be able to grow this business and so i think that my specific journey will be a really good representation of what the average person can do because not every Everybody has 10k or 20k sitting around that they're ready to invest. When I first started selling on Amazon, I started with around $500 and every single paycheck after that, I would try to invest about 100 bucks. Basically, whatever I had available after paying my bills, then I would try to put in more money. At the time, I was working a job that was making me around 40-45k annually. And so I think the average salary in Quebec is like 50k. And I think this amount is just like a good average amount of the average person. I also pay bills, I pay rent, I have a car, I pay for my car. So I'm somebody who didn't come from money. I didn't have a large like lump sum of money that I was able to put into my business right away. I started very like small with $500. Then I added gradually throughout the time that I was still working my nine to five while doing Amazon. I'm also somebody that has bills. <laughs> so again, I just think that my journey is a very good like realistic representation of what the average person can do. Whereas a lot of people will show their numbers. They'll show how quickly they grew without disclosing that they either came from money. <laughs> they had a large lump sum of money that they were able to invest. They had a very high paying job that they were able to put lots of money into it and the problem with that is that the average person won't be able to do this so if you're telling the world oh yeah you can make x amount of money in this amount of time but the average person is not going to be able to start with the amount of money that you started with it's a little bit like misleading in my opinion so again i just wanted to make this video to show you guys what my journey looked like and if you can relate to my situation and to how much money i started with i think this will be a good idea of how much you can make all right guys so i'm going to be showing you guys the actual screenshots from my seller board. I can't believe I'm doing this because I've always been a little bit like shy to show the actual numbers just because so many people talk so much shit. It's like if you don't show your numbers, they talk shit. But then if you do show your numbers, they talk even more shit. So I've gone through phases of being like, yeah, I'm going to share everything. I'm going to show all my numbers, da da da. But then sometimes I just get so many like weird comments and just like weird shit. So I'm just like, in a way, I like to keep it kind of personal to myself. So it's definitely a big step right now for me to show you guys this. But again, I always like strive to show you guys everything as honest as I possibly can. So let's go way back. We're gonna jump back to the first month of me ever selling on Amazon. So I started my journey. It was April of 2020. I didn't sell my first product until June. I didn't really send them in until June. But basically in the month of April, this is when me and my boyfriend started learning. And so basically this was during 
peak COVID, we were both working from home. My boyfriend found a random video of somebody talking about online arbitrage and he was like, this sounds too good to be true. Like we need to try this. With online arbitrage, we were really attracted to it because there's zero marketing required. So basically we learned as much as we could in the month of April and May. So we were watching like hundreds and hundreds of YouTube videos trying to understand how to use Keepa. We were using tactical arbitrage and Keepa at the time. And so basically throughout the month of May, I started purchasing some products. I ended up having a total of 16 products during my first shipment. I purchased about two to three units of each of them and so I had 36 total units in my first shipment. My boyfriend actually ended up sending out his shipment. It was like the end of May. He made his first sale on June 2nd of 2020. This is when like we were like we had no idea what we were doing but we noticed that he had an order and it was actually a Raptors basketball. It was the first thing he ever sold and I remember we were trying to understand like how the orders worked on Amazon and we could see order like we could see that somebody ordered it but we weren't sure if it was real we were just like is this possible because literally his products became active on June 2nd and he sold his first product on June 2nd so we kind of couldn't believe it we were like oh my god this is actually real like it actually works and so two days later I sent out my shipment on June 4th. Basically, I let my boyfriend be the guinea pig. And then once I saw that he was able to make a sale, I was like, oh my God, I need to send in my items right away. So I sent in my items on June 4th. They only actually became active on June 14th. I remember it was June 14th because one of my oldest friends, that's her birthday and I was at her birthday. And I remember looking at my phone and seeing that I made my first ever sale. Guys, I'm just gonna show you really quickly. So I actually already made a thread about this on Twitter. So if you've already seen it, you've probably already seen this screenshot. But basically, I took this picture with my boyfriend's phone of my phone showing the sales that I made in my first week of selling on Amazon. Basically, you can see it says last seven days, $774 in sales. I sold, this was June 14th, my first sale. I sold something for about 20 bucks. Then on June 15th, it was like $160 in sales. This was my second day of selling. The moment I saw this, I was like, oh my God, like this is when I really was like, wow, this actually works. Like we can really do this. Then it kept progressing. Like I kept making sales every day. Then on my sixth, day of selling I sold over $200 in sales which to me was just insane because it was my first actual week of selling products on Amazon I didn't take a course I didn't really learn from anyone other than YouTube and kind of just trial and error like we just kind of sent the products in hoping for the best and to see that it actually worked I was just like wow so I'm gonna show you guys the results from that month so from June 14th up until June 30th so for the first 15 days of my business the net profit was $8.99 so obviously this is quite low. <laughs> if I wasn't paying for tactical arbitrage and Keepa and a bunch of other softwares, it would have been $157, but then I wouldn't have been able to find those products without it. So honestly, I don't regret paying for those things up front because I really think that it did help me build my business. Without using those softwares, I wouldn't have been able to find any of these products. These are all old products that I don't really sell anymore. It's been like over three years so obviously products come and go but as you can see like if i scroll down and look like these products were actually making profit like look this one made 59 dollars this one made 53 dollars like they were actually making profit i just didn't have enough units i had only bought a couple of units of each so obviously it wasn't making like thousands of dollars yet um and that's like that's really important to realize with this business is that when you send in the first shipment you're probably not going to make a lot of money because you still need to pay off any expenses that you bought up front. And so to see this profit number is very normal in my first month of selling. Like it was my first 15 days of selling and I made $9 which is extremely normal. And now that there are softwares that exist like SellerAmp that are like 20 bucks a month, it's like my expenses for tactical arbitrage were $120. And don't get me wrong, I love tactical arbitrage. I have so much love for that software in my heart because it really helped me get my business off its feet. That's what helped me build my business the first like two and a half years of my business. So I don't regret paying for it. I still sometimes use tactical arbitrage when I'm not able to find something with seller amp. So I still recommend it. But since there are softwares that exist now that are literally $20, it's like give it a shot, try to make it work. If it doesn't work, then you can try tactical arbitrage. So now I'm gonna show you guys the second month. So the second month was the month of July and I had made $54 of net profit. Again, the profit is quite low. The margin is quite low. And that's again, because as you can see, the gross profit was almost $200. You can see each product was pretty much making profit, but it's because 
I was paying for tactical arbitrage, Kipa, and this is the month that I bought poly bags, which were like $50. So at this point, I was still purchasing some of that upfront supplies that I needed. All right, so month number three. So for the month of August, I had made $282 of net profit. The margin was 10%. I remember seeing so many people saying that their margins were 20% and thinking like, oh my god, why, are, why is my margin so low? Like, I had made all of my calculations expecting my margins to be like 20% and then to see them being 10%, I was kind of discouraged. But it is because I had so many expenses. Like, if I didn't have so many expenses, my profit would have been around 20%. I can actually see here like exactly the breakdown of what I purchased. So this is the Dymo. It was actually $140, Kipa 23 Tactical arbitrage, 117 poly bags, $26. So again, it makes sense that my profit was around 10% because I was like, I still hadn't bought a legit thermal printer. And then when I did buy that thermal printer, that helped me a lot with the business. So it was normal that I did have to buy some stuff for the business to help it work better. So I think the margins were quite normal at this point. However, I do remember like at the end of August reviewing these numbers and then being like, oh my god, we worked the entire summer. Like we worked from May basically until September. And to think that I had only made around $300 was kind of discouraging. Like, I remember feeling a little bit discouraged at this point because it just felt like we worked all summer while everyone else was having fun and chilling and I only had like $400 total to show for it. So it definitely was a moment where I was like, oh my god, this is gonna take like so much more work than I thought. But I'm really glad that I stuck through with it because because at that point, it's like if I would have quit, it would have just like made everything that I did not worth it. So I'm glad that I continued. So now I'm going to show you guys the month of September. All right, so the month of September, this is where things started to pick up. And it's literally because I realized that I could cancel Tactical Arbitrage and cancel Keepa for like the months that I didn't need to find new products. Also guys, if you're starting to sell on Amazon, share an account with someone. I don't know why me and my boyfriend did not share our Keepa account. We did not share our tactical arbitrage account. It would have made things so much less expensive if we would have like split the costs because you can literally have them on two different computers. So I remember canceling all of the memberships because I was at a point where I had a lot of solid products and I just had to keep restocking them. So I didn't really feel like I needed to find more products. I was just at a point where all of the capital that I had was going towards restocking all of these products and so I remember feeling really good with the month of September I was like yes things are finally picking up and at the time I was making about 2k a month from my nine to five so being able to make like one fourth of that amount after like three and a half months of selling on Amazon felt really good all right so the month of October I remember this is when I started paying for be cool my repricer and I still had some other expenses as well so basically I was still just restocking all my inventory and not paying for TA or Kipa but I was paying for some some other softwares like Be Cool and QuickBooks. I was trying out QuickBooks at the time and so this added a couple more expenses. I remember feeling good because I was still able to make $500 that month but then I remember like the end of October slash early November packing the largest shipment I've ever packed in my entire life. It was like 350 units in one shot. I literally have never wanted to cry so much in my life and I had some items that were really heavy because I had to lift all of these heavy boxes. I had to bring them to UPS. It was just like a breaking point for me like I remember being like I cannot do this anymore I need to get a prep center Chris had just started working with a prep center like a couple weeks before that happened to me so I was like you know what it's time I'm gonna get a prep center so for the month of November I remember it being super like low profit because I was still kind of in that transitional phase of trying to work with a prep center permanently so a lot of my inventory that I was sending to the prep center was stuck at the prep center because they were waiting until I reached like 100 units until they would actually send out the items but it was taking me a bit of time to like actually get them there because I had just sent that shipment of 300 units which pretty much took up all of my capital at the time so I was still trying to send new products to the prep center but it was taking me a little bit of time and the prep center was taking their sweet time to send it so this month I had much lower profit I also had a lot more expenses I started paying for tactical arbitrage again and Kipa and this is also when I started using Sellerboard actually I had started using Sellerboard the same time as Be Cool which was in September but because there's a two-month free trial I only ended up paying for it in the month of November this is when my software expenses became really expensive it was literally $200 so so my net profit was like $200 less than it could have been just because of all of these softwares but again all of the softwares were helping me with my business so 
it's like I had to pay for them. Guys, I also remember in November, I had sent in a shipment on my own because I was like waiting for my prep center, but they were taking so long and it was Q4. I was like, oh my God, I need to get more inventory in. So I remember ordering some items to my house just so that I could send them in in time for Christmas. So I remember packing a shipment. I remember specifically it was this Crayola product. I think I had like 50 units that I had packed myself. I sent them in. Tell me how this shipment was stuck at Amazon. They probably left it in a corner somewhere, but I remember they received it like mid-November. But literally, I'm not joking, this shipment did not become active until January. Like it was the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen with Amazon. This has actually never happened to me again, but it was so hard to have like so much of my money tied up in one box that was just missing and I was like what am I gonna do if it's actually missing and imagine like 50 units this product cost me seven dollars like imagine 50 times seven I'm just curious to see that's like 350 dollars that I had tied up somewhere missing in the Amazon warehouse and at the time because I didn't have a lot of capital in the business and I was still kind of growing things it's like I couldn't afford for that to happen so that's another reason of why my sales were so low for the month of November because all of my products were just like stuck either at the prep center or missing at Amazon and obviously with Christmas delays as well everything was just kind of stuck so for the month of December I finally had the prep center sending some stuff but I remember that my items that the prep center sent only became active after Christmas. So I literally missed out on all of the like rush Christmas sales. Like I literally had nothing in stock. So the $300 worth of Crayola products was still not active. The prep center sent the items literally they became act active after the 25th of december i was still able to make a lot of sales for boxing day so that was good at least but i still felt kind of sad because i was like i feel like i'm doing so much work and i finally got a prep center i finally had things in place but nothing was just available on time and so i kind of missed out for q4 which kind of sucked so i think this is a good indication that like you should just always keep sending in your inventory because even if you miss black friday or the christmas rush you can still get sales for boxing day or even after that because a lot of people get money for christmas and they still want to keep spending so there's no like cutoff date of when you should stop sending your products just keep sending them in all right so for the month of january i remember my crayola products i think they became active on january 2nd so i finally had those back in stock and i finally had the products from my prep center back in stock i also was doing a bit of ra at the time so i remember i went to canadian tire so for any canadians that are watching this is the best free gem i can give you if you go to canadian tire on boxing day they sell lego sets for 40 percent off because these are products that they're not naturally selling all year round they're only selling them specifically for christmas so when christmas is over they're like oh shit we're not going to be able to sell this throughout the year so let's liquidate them for boxing day to get rid of them so on boxing day me and my boyfriend we went to canadian tire we each spent like at least two three k just on a bunch of lego sets that were all 40 percent off and basically they had all of their toys 40% off. So I wasn't only buying Lego, I was buying a bunch of different stuff. And so I was able to send in that shipment early January. So it became available in January. So that helped me make a lot of sales for the month of January. And like I was saying before, people will sometimes tell you, oh, stop sending products in mid-December or in January because the sales are going to slow down. But this is proof that people still buy toys in January. So as you can see, I was selling like a bunch of toys. I only started to really notice a dip maybe like end of January, early February. That's when the toys that I was selling kind of slowed down a little bit but this is when I learned that like people still spend a lot coming into January because they all have money from Christmas they're all like oh it's new year new me I need to buy stuff like even me I noticed that like every January I'm purchasing a lot of new stuff so basically I had sold almost eleven thousand dollars in sales the net profit was a thousand eight hundred ninety one dollars profit margin was 17 percent ROI 45 percent this is when I was like you know what this is actually a real business that I can really make work because I finally had more than 10% margin and my expenses were still high. Like if you look at my expenses, I was paying for tactical arbitrage. I paid $300 to my prep center because they sent 300 units for me. Paid for Keepa, QuickBooks, Sellerboard, Be Cool. We paid somebody to add expaths uh, on tactical arbitrage for us. I was also buying labels. So as you can see, I had like $600 worth of expenses and my profit margin was still close to 20%. So this is when I was like, you know what, this is the power of Amazon, this is crazy and even though this was like seven and a half months after making my first sale, at the time, obviously it felt really long during those months where I had a bunch of issues, but when I look back on it now, I'm like being able to make almost $2,000 in one month after seven and a half months of growing a business 
is really not so bad. There are some businesses that don't become profitable until like years later. So this was the point where I realized that I really wanted to continue doing this and, and this is when I was really able to see the power of it. Obviously, I didn't quit my job that same month <laughs> because I really wanted to keep building my business. I really wanted to make sure that I was able to maintain this number because obviously with Q4 usually there are more sales than usual so I was still learning how to maintain this for the next couple of months of me selling. It took me about two years to feel comfortable to quit my job. I was reinvesting my profits pretty much completely for the first year of selling. Obviously I was investing it on like softwares and printers and like stuff that I was buying for the business but for my own personal spending I was trying not to use any Amazon money. I bought a computer and I bought my laptop and stuff like that but I still kept my job because I wanted to make sure that I had things running smoothly before completely quitting my job. I was also building some other streams of income on the side so I started selling digital products, I started doing coaching, I started also investing in the stock market, also started my YouTube channel. So I was learning how to build all of these things around me to really feel secure because I've always been like a multiple streams of income type of girl and that was really important to me to build up before I quit my job. And so I think that's pretty much it for this video. I really hope that this can give you some insight into the truth about what an Amazon business, specifically online arbitrage, looks like. And so if you found this video helpful, please leave it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more Amazon content on the way, please subscribe to my channel. I will see you guys in the next video.